Here is a list of topics we are going to cover in this video. In the end, we have an exercise for you. So watch till the end. I have this file with spam emails where I have the text body of the email. And the first column says whether it's ham or spam. Ham means it's a good email. It is not a spam. Okay. And you can see that whenever you have spam, you have terms like free message or free entry or winner. You know, this just by reading it, it definitely looks like a spam. I have loaded this particular CSV file in a pandas data frame as usual. And I'm going to now do some data exploration to see what's going on with this data. The first thing I'm doing is just grouping it by category and describing it so that I know that there are 4,825 ham and 7,447 spam. Okay, so that much I know there are a good amount of spams in our data set. The spam column is text I want to convert it to a numbers because we all know that machine learning models they understand numbers they don't understand text so we have to convert the category and message both the columns into numbers somehow okay the first one is very easy category ham and spam we can use one and zero so that's what we are going to do and the way to do that is by using this apply function here, when I say DF category, it takes the category column and applies this particular Lambda function on it. The Lambda function takes each individual values and checks if it is spam, then it will put a return a value of one, otherwise zero. And we will create a new column called spam here. And when you execute this, you can see that all the ham are zero, the spam are one here. Once that is done, we can import the train test split method from sklearn as usual. Here I have imported it and I'm gonna keep my test size to be 25%. And when you run it, it's, it is splitting the samples into train and test data set. Okay, once this is done, we still have a message column which is text so that text column we definitely want to convert into, into numbers now the way we'll do this is using count vectorizer technique in count vectorizer technique let's say you have these four documents or the email bodies with all this text one of the ways to convert this into matrix or a vector is you find out the unique words in each of these documents and you'll find that there are nine unique words combinedly in all of these documents now you can take each of these documents and you can treat these nine unique words as features or kind of like a column and you can build this kind of matrix okay here this is the first document second document and so on the first document you say end is zero the occurrence of end is zero times you, you see that there is no zero document appeared once first appeared once similarly in the second document the document appeared two so you say document here document here so this is a simple technique of uh, representing words as count okay and we can use these individual columns as features for our problem I took this example from sklearn documentation and here is a code snippet from sklearn documentation. It explains the same thing but with the sklearn API and these are the APIs we are going to use. For our data set, I used count vectorizer and created the metrics which I showed you in the picture. So it created probably many features that's why you see dot 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 and these features are equal to number of unique words in our corpus. Corpus is basically all the unique words that you see in this huge data set. So you realize it will be many columns in our metric. Now naive Bayes have three kind of classifiers like Bernoulli, Multinomial and Gaussian. In the last tutorial we used Gaussian, naive Bayes. Um, here is the core answer on what's the difference between the three and this guy actually saying really gave a good answer where Bernoulli is basically when your features okay features not the target variable when your features are zero or one they are binary in nature that's when you use this 
Multinomial is when you have a discrete data. For example, your movie rating ranging from 1 to 5. Gaussian naive Bayes is when you have normal distribution or a bell curve uh, in your features. Okay, we are going to use multinomial naive Bayes here for our problem. And the way you do that is by writing this code. Just to save the typing time, I'm, I'm just copying and pasting the code, but you kind of get it. You run model.fit function on your x train count and y train. Remember the x train count is basically the text, which is the emails converted into a number metric. Once the model is trained, it is ready to uh, make a prediction. So let's have two emails, okay? So we have these two emails. Now the first one looks like a good email where a friend is asking another friend to go for a football game. And the other one clearly looks like a spam. And when you run it, you see it detected the second email as one, which is it's a spam. All right, now let's measure the accuracy or the score. And the way you do that is first X test you need to convert it into count because our model is designed such that it works only on numbers. And then you can feed it to model for prediction. And you find that the model performs really well with 98% probability. So you can see that for spam, non-spam type of problem, the naive base model works really great. Now you found that the converting it into a metric create a little bit of inconvenience in terms of when I was supplying X test count, I had to perform this transform method. Also, when I was trying these test emails, I had to call this transform method before giving it to my model. sklearn has a nice feature called pipeline where you can define a pipeline of your transformation. Here what we are doing is on our raw data, we are applying some sort of transformation before feeding it into our model. Right now we use only count vectorizer. Some people use more than one, one transformation. People use like TFIDF and so on. So in that case, if you have a scale on pipeline, it is super useful and convenient. And I'm going to show you how to use the pipeline. So the first thing you do is you import the pipeline like this, and then you create the pipeline using your pipeline steps. So my first step is count vectorizer. So just to remind you on what I'm doing here is I'm trying to simplify the same code base. So the code worked till here. Okay. Our model is ready. It scored 98% fine, but since we had to perform this transformation steps, I am writing the same code using a simple API. And here I created a pipeline with two steps. First step is convert my text into the vector of count vectorizer and then apply the multinomial naive base. And when I have my classifier created, what I'm doing is I'm going to train it. Now this time when I train it, I can train directly on X train. So remember what is X train? X train has this text. Okay. In the previous example, we use X train count. We converted text into count and then train the model. Here we can directly feed the text into our model because internally this pipeline will convert to a vector first and then it will apply naive, naive base on that. So when you run it, you can see this works okay. And again, you can check the performance of our classifier. It is same 98%. Okay. And just to verify if the emails prediction works okay, you can run this and you can see the first email is not spam. The second one is spam. And those are these two emails. All right, now comes the most interesting part of my tutorial, which is the exercise. I always give this example that if you want to learn swimming by watching swimming videos, you're not going to learn swimming, okay? What do you do? You have to move your butt and jump in the swimming pool. Similarly, if you want to know coding, you have to code. 
and I have prepared these exercises with so much effort for you. So why don't you take your laptop and just work on this naive base exercise? All you have to do is load sklearn datasets wine dataset and classify those wines into one of the three categories using naive base. You can use Gaussian and multinomial classifier and tell me which one performs the best in the comments below. I have the link of this file, exercise file, in the video description below. Also the tutorial code that was shown in this video, that code link is also available in the video description below. So all this code is available. So you can just go ahead and try it. There is a solution link by the way, but a good student will not click on the link without trying it first on his own. So I assume you all are beautiful, good students. You will try this thing on your own and then only look at the solution to match your answer. Thank you very much. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share this with your friends, subscribe to my channel and please post a feedback in the comments below. It really helps me. It helps me improve my content. Thank you. Bye.